Welcome back in one of the Bears Robot Plays YouTube channel. Today is Wednesday. Forgot what day it was. November 27th. Uh, we're going to be breaking down some Wednesday night plays. We have a lot of teams in action tonight. Everybody's playing because there's no games on Thanksgiving. So this is the last time you're going to see me on the NBA side until Friday. We do have the Knicks going up against the Mavericks and the Thunder going up against the Warriors. Both these games will be on TV. Let's take a look at the Tuesday night plays before we get started. Uh, both player props did not hit. Lori had seven three-point attempts, made none. Uh, 0 for 7 night from 3. That one was tough. Zach Levine had 19 points or 18 points through three quarters. Did not score a point in the fourth quarter. Was not needed. They were up by 20 against the Wizards. Both of the game picks did win, though. Bucks money line. No Giannis, no problem. Uh, they beat the Heat. Damian Lillard went off in the first quarter. Had 20 points in the first quarter, something like that. I think he finished with 40. Um he did make a big comeback. Bucks were up by 20 at one point, and they barely won the game. So we'll take the win. Uh, and then the Rockets plus three and a half. They were up big. T-Wolves came back, forced overtime. Rockets in overtime, couldn't miss, played good defense. So that one did win as well. Also, I did say over uh, between the Bulls and the Wizards. Didn't put it on there, but I did say the over in that game. I don't know. I want to say the it hit under because the Wizards didn't put up a lot of points. Uh, but the Bulls did. The Bulls scored like 130. So we'll check on that. I think it was like 242 and a half is what I got it at. So we'll double check that. Um, win or loss, I'll put it on the scoreboard. Update for the, for not tomorrow because we won't be here tomorrow. But for uh, Friday's plays, I'll update that. Let's take a look at the plays for Wednesday. We have the Knicks going up against the Mavericks. The play is going to be the Knicks minus four. This line seems incredibly low because the Knicks, they're coming off that ass kicking that they just handed the Denver Nuggets. The Mavericks, though, they haven't looked great, especially after losing Luka. They've been able to win a couple games, one of them against the Atlanta Hawks. That's not really, uh, you know, like a big prize. You beat the Atlanta Hawks. But I said the Knicks. I was going to stay away from them until they showed me they were a legit team. Well, they answered the call. They beat the Denver Nuggets. They beat the Suns. They've put up 130-plus points in three of the last four games. That's enough for me. They're really starting to click as a team. Uh, everybody on this team feels like they're scoring 20-plus points per game now. They shot 60% from the field in that last game against Denver. And like I said, everybody had 25-plus points. OG looks great. Jalen's starting to figure things out. Towns down low looks okay. Bridge is coming up as well. This is a great team. Josh Hart, as always, beating the drum. He's the heart and soul of this team. This organization looks like they're making things right over the last five or six games. So I think the Knicks have found a little bit of a stride. And whenever I look at the Mavericks, I see Kyrie Irving, old Clay Thompson. They got some pretty good big guys down low, PJ and Derek. But other than that, the bench isn't very deep. Quentin Grimes, I guess. Um, but I, I just don't see the Mavericks matching up with all the talent the Knicks have. If they were to win this game, it would have to be down low. I think the Mavericks do hold a pretty big advantage down low, but I just don't see that happening. I think the Knicks take this one pretty easily. I'm going to take them minus four as the first play. And for the other play, both of these games will be on ESPN. Double header. So you can watch the Mavericks game, then watch the Warriors game back-to-back -back on ESPN. Play is going to be Golden State. They have been losers of back-to-back -back games going up against the Spurs and the Nets. Two bad losses. They're going to change that in this game. I think both these teams have been special defensively. The Warriors and the Thunder all season long, especially the Thunder. They've really been great defensively. But the Warriors have been a surprise this season. I didn't think they were going to be that good. Turns out trading Clay Thompson was a very good idea because they've got some young players. They're not going to have Jonathan Kaminga in this game, which is really going to hurt them. But Trace Jackson Davis from Indiana, he's been fantastic. To start the year, we have seen Oklahoma City get ripped off in a few of these games because if you stop Shea Gilders Alexander, you can win the game pretty easily. The Spurs did that. Actually, the Spurs might have done that twice. They were able to beat the Thunder twice, I think, this season because they were able to shut down Shea. They only scored 104 points in that game. Even if he does get the 30 plus points, you just have to slow him down a little bit. The Thunder without him, also without Chet Holmgren in this game, I think the Warriors have the overall better team. Without Chet, obviously, on the floor. So I'm going to take them at home. They're the underdog. They're at home. They've lost two in a row. they got to find a way to win this game. I'm going to take them on the money line as the final play of the day. Let's take a look at the player props. First player prop of the day. I said this last time. I'll say it again. No matter who is going up against LaMelo Ball, no matter what the situation is, I will be taking his over total points on the free play side or the member side until he fails to go over his total points. Lemonel Ball has been the most used play by myself this season. I believe I'm currently seven wins, only one loss with him. He's coming off a 50-point game, a 44-point game. In the 44-point game, the Hornets were winning the entire game, mainly because 
of LaMelo Ball and a little bit of Brandon Miller. But the Hornets only scored 16 points or something in the fourth quarter, most of that coming from LaMelo Ball. This is a one-man wrecking crew, and whenever he gets tired, Brandon Miller does most of the scoring. So basically, it's two players against the entire other team. If the Hornets gave these two players some decent help, the Hornets could be really good. They've got Curry, Seth. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to look forward to. LaMelo Ball has been shooting the most per game this season. He's shooting 44% from the field, 35.6% from the outside. Both those numbers are trending up over the last week because he scored 44 points and 50 points over the last two games. But I say this every time I break down LaMelo Ball. You should take this player prop just on pure volume of shots he puts up every single night. If he takes his average shots, if he makes his average shot percentage, this one's going to go over. I'm going to take the over total points going up against Miami Heat and for the final play of the day. I'm going to go right back to the MVP. Nikola Jokic, best player in the NBA, triple-double in this game. I don't care what you guys take it, rebounds, points, assists. If I were to give you – I know a lot of people can't take these combos. So if I were to give you one, I would say his points. I think he's going to be very aggressive in this game. You can play the triple-double on FanDuel. I think you can also play it on DraftKings. But, again, if you're just looking for an overall player prop, I'd go with his points. There is no way Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets have back-to-back games like they just had. Not only did the head coach come out and say some stuff at the press conference, he called out basically the entire team, including Nikola Jokic, for how embarrassing it was. They said they were not going to flush this game. They're going to hold this game because they got embarrassed. They want people to understand that they're not going to flush it. They're going to look at this game for motivation. Jamal Murray also came out and said some stuff, calling his team soft, saying that we got to be better. I got a solution for Jamal Murray. Buy yourself a mirror, young man. Look at yourself in the mirror. You're the problem. Jamal Murray's a liability on the floor. Unless it's a playoff game, unless they need a bucket with two seconds left and they're down by one, Jamal Murray is worthless for the Denver Nuggets. He needs to figure it out sooner rather than later. I don't care about Jamal Murray unless Nikola Jokic is looking for some assists in this game, though. I'm going to go with Nikola Jokic. The Nuggets will not have another performance like that, and they're going up against the Jazz, who just got manhandled by the Spurs in the second half of tonight's game. So they're coming off a back-to-back. The Joker's going to have a triple-double in this game. This is going to be an absolute blowout. Again, if you have to take one, I would take the over total points. I think he's going to be much more aggressive in this game. But for myself, I'm taking the Joker triple-double as the play. Let's go over the recap graphic. We're going to be taking the Knicks minus four going up against the Mavs. Warriors on the money line. They are the underdog going up against the Thunder. LaMelo Ball over his total points was 29.5 last time. Going to be 30.5 this time, have to imagine. And then Nikola Jokic triple-double going up against the Utah Jazz. Guys, going to do it for the NBA Plays and Prods for Wednesday. November 27th, slide of games. If you guys enjoyed the content, please share to like this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys next video, and thanks for watching.